what is up everybody welcome to this video in this video we are going to talk about no sql and in particular we are going to cover up the application advantages the different types of no sql and finally we are going to decide that when are we going to use the no sql when there is already a relational database like the structured query language So this is a brand new series called what is Wednesdays. So this type of videos where we answer particular questions or we are going to talk about one particular technology would be releasing on Wednesdays. So make sure you, you, you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon. So what is no SQL? It stands for not only SQL it doesn't stand for no SQL okay that's wrong it stands for not only SQL and it is a non relational database so what does that mean if you have used SQL or if you have not then totally forget about it have you used the Excel Microsoft Excel it has these rows and columns right so when you have headers and you store data within them so those are relational databases actually so SQL or structured query language is a relational database but not only SQL is not a relational database it is a non-relational databases and it does not need a schema so now what do you mean by schema for example in a structured query language you would be defining um, that um, for example a customer would need his name his uh, username his his email ID uh, so on right and each of the customer must have these fields either empty or non empty just uh, leave it but they must have these fields so that is known as a schema but when you are using a no SQL you need not define a schema there are four main types in no SQL we'll be talking about them very soon in this video and uh, when you have a huge amount of data which is to be processed and which is transacted uh, very frequently for example uh, take a company like Facebook take a company like uh, Google uh, plethora of data petabytes of data are being transacted so at that kind of situation you would actually want to opt no SQL we'll talk about that in detail later so does that mean that SQL or RDBMS is dead? No ways, no ways. Because there are currently a lot of applications which are using relational databases and they have their own set of advantages. Mm, you, you cannot tell that no SQL came in and it completely ruled out SQL. No, that is not the case. SQL and no SQL are kind of two brothers or um, two entities existing there and which which could be used parallelly for different kinds of applications so let's look at some advantages of no sql though so if you have a big data okay if you have huge amounts of data like i said you would be using a no sql okay because um, though sql is highly scalable the cost of maintaining such amount of data and the complexity involved in it is too large okay and uh, although like when you're watching this video there could be other solutions available um, for example postgres sql which is a relational database is um, highly scalable but uh, this no sql thing is meant for these kind of things it, that is what i mean i don't mean that sql is not able to handle such big data but the complexity and the efficiency decreases there okay the complexity increases and the efficiency decreases there so again you need not define a schema and it handles unstructured data you do not have structured data like uh, rows and columns and uh, such kind of complicated stuff so and you do not have uh, much to do here uh, for example you could have a single admin and uh, he could he could be uh, taking care of all of those uh, database uh, stuff whereas in SQL you could have different files and different admins uh, handling each of the separate stuff 
So that works like that. And in terms of scalability, yes, as I told you, there are these uh, column-wise storage and um, um, those graph and node storage in SQL, which actually stores petabytes of uh, data, uh, petabytes of uh, data in their data sets, which is uh, being used by uh, Apple, Netflix, actually, okay. Needs a defined schema. Again, that could be an advantage as well as a disadvantage, depending on the application and the kind of users you have. So if you want the programmers to program in such a way that the users have a defined, um, say the schema, then you could go, go with the SQL. And it is also better for relational data. So if you have some data which needs this kind of uh, table uh, kind of storage and where you need to form relations between various tables and communicate between the tables then you use SQL or RDBMS and the data store takes up a minimal amount of space possible for example when you consider SQL the data is stored in such a way that minimum amount of space is consumed by the database and the last point is uh, communication is far better between the tables. For example, if you have two tables and you want to link the, uh, say, uh, if you have a blog and you have one table for user and one table for posts, and if you want to link the, say, the ownership of the post with a user, you could easily uh, uh, form a link between those two tables and, mm, you could have constraints between those tables. So such kind of communications are easily uh, available in SQL. So finally, we are here with the types of uh, no SQL databases. Again, these are not the only four types, but these are the main four types of no SQL. If you are referring various other books and various other forums, you would be coming across one or two more uh, types of um, no SQL databases, but these are like the main four types. So the first one is a document database. So these document databases actually they pair each key with another complex data structure known as a document. Okay, so these documents can contain many different key value pairs or key array pairs. Or even you could you could even have nested uh, documents. So these are kind of JSON, but please don't like uh, think that they're completely like JSON type because JSON is again completely different thing. But the structure in which these document databases are stored are similar to the JSON key value pairs. Example: You have MongoDB. So this is MongoDB. Uh, it is again a document database. It's pretty popular. And when you talk about uh, NoSQL, you uh, see many people using MongoDB, many developers actually using MongoDB. You have uh, plenty of uh, online websites like MLabs, which provide um, minimum amount, minimum uh, space uh, required for you to at least practice with MongoDB with online thing. Otherwise, also you could use MongoDB offline. And the next one, uh, the honorary mention is a Firebase. Firebase is kind of real-time database. It is also a NoSQL, okay? And Firebase, in Firebase, the data is stored as JSON, okay? And it is actually real-time. When you build, for example, a chat application and uh, without re reloading or without uh, any delays, once the message is uh, sent on the chat application and Firebase is used as a back end there then you could see real-time updates of the chat messages uh, on the firebase real-time database for example and the next type we have are graph databases the graph stores are actually used to store information about the networks of data such as social connections okay and graphs actually include a lot of nodes in it you have edges you have vertices and it's pretty complex uh, level and it is actually used for uh, storing huge amount of data again uh, it is not easy to learn them the learning curve is uh, slightly tough it's not easy to learn them uh, one of the examples is neo4j 
this is the official website for Neo 4J. If you want to look, have a look at it, you could again do so. The third type is the column databases, or you could also call them the wide column stores. The white column stores such as uh, Cassandra, for example, are optimized for queries over large data sets and store columns of data together instead of rows. Here you do not have any kind of rows here as such or uh, any kind of key value pairs. Everything here is a column and these columns can be infinitely scaled. Again infinite is not a true word. but they are actually uh, so much scalable. So this is the official website of the Apache Cassandra and there was this one line which I wanted to show in the scalable. Some of the largest production deployments include apples with over 75,000 nodes storing over 10 petabytes of data and Netflix over 1 trillion requests per day again yeah so you get the idea right so these kind of data databases are used um, to kind of provide such amount of scalability so the fourth type we have are the key value databases again uh, don't confuse them with the document databases because document databases are based on documents and then key value pairs but the key value stores are the simplest NoSQL databases every single item in the database is stored as an attribute name or key together with its value examples of key value stores are redis for example okay which uh, allow each value to have a type such as integer which adds extra functionality to it. So you have Redis here, their official website. You could again feel free to check it out. I have the links down in the description below. So here is one small uh, illustration of relational databases and document databases. The first one, the blue uh, table like you see is a uh, illustration of relational databases where you have the name username password token id and the date there with uh, different rows and columns there and the second one the below one is uh, um, you could consider as an example for the document databases like mongodb where you have the um, document and you have a key value pair and uh, you could also have uh, inner uh, nested documents and so on so welcome to the final part where we're going to talk about when should I use a no SQL. So when relation databases would not be adequate to store your data sets, you'd be using no SQL. Again, I do not want to kind of repeat that point. So it's uh, self explanatory. We have already talked about that, right? And the second point would be um, probably due to the massive increase in data volume. So um, take for example, you are planning on a website today, okay? And you estimate that website is gonna have uh, millions of users, millions and millions of users, and you would have to store their data uh, everywhere uh, across the globe, then you should be going for no SQL. Again, uh, we cannot be generalized over these kind of databases because it is not going to be one single person who is going to decide the stack they're going to use while building an application. When you're in a company, you are going to discuss and they are going to take um, almost months to decide the stack on which they are going to build their application. Like uh, It's not like uh, this person likes MongoDB, this person likes a Postgres, this person likes a MySQL, uh, he likes a Swift, um, he's my favorite so I'm going to take of um, take um, MySQL and Swift. No, it doesn't work like that. So um, depending on the application, we are going to choose our database. So examples where NoSQL is used are search engines, social networks and cloud services. So when should you be using SQL then? Is SQL out? No. When you have to store structured data storage, Okay, and with schema, you use SQL. And um, in the learning stages, uh, when you are a junior developer and you want to just set up quickly and you want to just get going when database is not your main thing in your application, then you are going to use um, MySQL. You could also go with uh, NoSQL, but 
you you may use a mysql and if you're not dealing with big data then definitely you could go with sql sql is quite famous and uh, it's being used everywhere it's not gonna go anywhere both the technologies have their ups and downs so you can decide you can learn both and you could decide which you need when you are building your actual applications so that is all for this video thank you so much for being um with me for such a long time if you have not hit the subscribe button please do that please like the video and share it among with your share it among your friends let them know about the no sql see you guys in the next video goodbye